you for that beautiful intro there buddy all right it's time to bash some liberals once again <laughs> but i mean it's it's not gonna matter so who cares i mean seriously though man dang man don't depreciate yourself man you got too much to live for and too much potential seriously man you got too much potential you know he's right about that. And I, for one, totally agree. You know, I can relate to a struggle, because, you know, I, I I tend to be self-depreciative, too. So, not that it matters, but you get where I'm coming from. So, ladies and germs, we're going to take a look at this day in history, September 25th. Now... It was on that day, September 25th, in 1775, that the Battle of Long Point took place. Some guy named Ethan Allen attempted to capture Montreal from British forces in the early days of the Revolutionary War, but the attempt was thwarted as Allen was captured and taken prisoner until 78. So... This is some 18th century stuff that happened over 240 years ago, but it doesn't matter because it's history now. And, you know, then again, history does have a habit of repeating itself. Ain't that right, Herman? Yeah, the past is the present, the present is a continuation of the past, and the future is merely subjective, meaning it might not even happen at all. I don't really think about the future. Yeah, same here. And it was also on this day, September 25th, some 14 years later, that the U.S. Congress approved the Bill of Rights. The first 10 amendments in the Constitution approved, ratified. <laughs> it's, it's funny that I think about it because the Bill of Rights aren't as important as they were before because we just don't value it that way anymore because we don't care about anyone else but ourselves. You know, it's funny now that I think about it because we weren't always like this. We had a reason to think about things and we had good reasons for ourselves and whatnot and yet most people take that for granted and it sucks. It's sad and it's sorry, you know? Well, no, I think we should face the fox. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on around us, you know, that we can't control. And maybe we should just take it with a pinch of salt and be done with it. That's not a bad attitude to have. Oh, I know it. Okay, so 1915 on this day, September 25th. There was a World War I battle that went on that was a joint attack by British and French armies to break German defenses across Artois and Champagne areas on the Western Front. First known instance of British armies using poison gas on an enemy. What a shock! I mean, does, does that really come as any surprise to you guys? Think about it. Really, though, think about it. I'm not shocked by that. I ain't even, I'm not even surprised, to be honest, there. Well, I tend to disagree. I'm kind of shocked to know this because one of my Native American ancestors fought in that war. I mean, not that anybody cares, but you know. Now, hold up just a minute. 
You expect me to believe that the British came up with the poison gas tactic on the enemies during World War I. I mean, explain that to me, please, man. I think we should just go ahead and move on already. So fast forward some 42 years, and it's 60 years ago on this day, and for whatever reason, the civil rights movement was officially in full bloom because nine black students back then started classes at an all-white school in Little Rock in Arkansas. The president had to send a thousand paratroopers to escort them and protect them because the scumbag Democratic governor Orval Falbus initially denied them entry. Kind of Kind of funny, isn't it? I'm not even sure if Falbus was a Democrat or not. I mean, I can't even say, but I don't think he was a Democrat. Well, that's debatable. You want to know the truth? I mean, I could care less. Hey, so what do you think about the civil rights movement? Well, I tend to think... It doesn't matter what you think about the civil rights movement. You just had to pull that one out, didn't you? Oh, I'm sorry. That was just my best Dwayne Johnson impersonation there. You know? Well, that was actually pretty good, actually, Willis. Really, really good there. Proud of you. Now, would you believe that it was on September 26th in 1789 that Thomas Jefferson was appointed Secretary of State? Would you believe that? Oh, I believe it, you know? I mean, Thomas Jefferson there, he was one of the four founding fathers, but there were actually a lot more than just four founding fathers. A lot more than that. Yeah, I'll say. I'm calling ditto on that. Yeah, me too. Hey, you sound just like me. You know? Seriously, you do. I do? How do you figure? Never mind. You know, it was also on that day in 1914 that this whole country started to go to heck in a handbasket when Woodrow Wilson signed the Federal Trade Commission Act to officially found the Federal Trade Commission. That was step one in America's downfall, in my opinion. Well, I don't know what to think of that, but I'm going to have to agree with you there since you know more about that than I do. See, I might like liberals, but I know for a fact if a liberal is lying to me. Let's face it, Woodrow Wilson was one of the liberals to end all liberals. His Federal Reserve, when he made it, you know, that killed the country financially infinitely many times over. That's why I say he's a liberal. Hey, I think we just spotted a liberal here. Yes, we have, Jason. September 26, 1950. UN troops recapture Seoul, South Korea. Now that's that's really interesting actually. This was this was during the Korean War, you know, and it's it's kind of it's ironic now that I think about it. You know, people in the South and Korea have it so much better than those in the North because those in the North don't even have freedom. Whatever freedom they have is all just an illusion. It's a, it's a big fat lie. You know, man, and I, I don't even care because I'm, I'm going to be out and I'll buy you there hunting alligators and stuff. I'd like to be out and buy you there too, but I don't know what the thing is. I really don't know. Same day, 10 years later, first televised debate between U.S. presidential candidates. John F. Kennedy, the straight shooter, Richard Nixon, the sellout, the illuminist, the great unwashed antichrist. Wait a minute. Didn't your intro just say that there were literally thousands of antichrists walking out there in our world today? Yeah, didn't you just say that? Yes, I did. And Richard Nixon was one of them. You might even say he's the wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there, Manfred. Thanks, Grandma.
September 17, 1821. The Mexican Independence War ends when this guy named Augustin de Iturbide. I don't even know if I said that right, but I'm just going to say that I did it anyway. And if I'm lying, I'm lying. And he led the army of the three guarantees to occupy Mexico City and end that 11-year war, which started in 1810. Fun fact! It was occupied by the Spanish for 300 years prior to the end of that war. Wow, you see, I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. Or mean, I could care less about all that, but I mean, that's just me. Meh. Same day, four years later, the first steam locomotive was launched, and it was built by Robert Stephenson and company, and... The steam engine, locomotion number one, carried passengers on a 26-mile journey between Winton Park and Stockton on Tees via Darlington in England. You know, uh, my ancestors had some British blood in them, but I don't know that they were in the UK for that matter. But I could care less about it, so let's just move on. Same day, 1939, the day that started World War II. 100,000 Polish troops were taken hostage by Hitler and his German Nazis as Warsaw surrendered after 19 days of resistance to the invasion. So that's where the whole thing started to fall apart. Yeah, I, I don't really care much for that stuff. Yeah, me neither. Let's just move on. Same day, 57 years later, the Afghan Civil War begins. The Taliban, who are basically a bunch of liberals, captured Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, and banished then-president Burhanuddin Rabbani to establish the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. You want to know what I say? Go ahead, Herman. Help to Islam, Christianity is king. Although I used to believe my own Native American religion, but then my family and I converted to Christianity when the tribulation started in 2047-ish. Spoiler alert for book one. Are the Brown Chronicles? Yes. Oh. September 28th, 1781, the Siege of Yorktown. Oddly enough, this is what ended the American Revolutionary War, and this siege was a combined effort of American and French forces against British troops on a peninsula in Yorktown, Virginia, and it ended on October 19th, 8, 1781, following which negotiations between us and Great Britain commenced and resulted in the Treaty of Paris being signed two years later. Did it take place in Versailles like all these other ones did after it? Uh, I don't know. It's up for God to say. I mean, we don't know for sure, so what's the difference? Well, I am a messenger of God, but... I don't even know when the end will come. But I can say that it probably, most likely, took place in Versailles. Is that you, Dad? The one and only. Eh, fair enough. Same day, 1928. Scottish bacteriologist Alexander Fleming accidentally discovered penicillin, the world's first antibiotic, while investigating the, the properties of staff at St. Mary's Hospital in London, England. He remarked later on, when I woke up just after dawn on September 28th, 1928, I certainly didn't plan to revolutionize all medicine by discovering the world's first antibiotic, but I guess that was exactly what I did. Well, I'm... I'm actually surprised by that. You shouldn't be shocked. I mean, we all knew this. My sister and I learned this in school. Yeah, but they didn't teach you how to be 
independent. They didn't teach you any of that. So you had to teach us. Yeah, because I have much more common sense than the school systems ever will. They brainwash you for 20 some odd years, and then they force you out into the world, and they screw you over and lie to you after saying that you're going to get a job as soon as you graduate there. But for most people, that never happens. Oi, I need figures, though. It very much figures. It's kind of ironic how things happen that way, but I don't really... It doesn't really matter to me. Good man, Willis. That's no problem at all. Same day, 1995. Israel-Palestinian Peace Accord is signed. Oddly enough, it was historic and it took place on the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, known as Oslo II Accord, at the White House in Washington, D.C. It was witnessed by Democratic libtard President Bill Clinton and other dignitaries from Russia, Egypt, Jordan, Norway, and the European Union. What is that sound? It sounds a lot like an ice cream truck is playing for a leash by Beethoven. Oddly enough, that's the first song I remember learning how to play on the piano. I was about four or five. I learned how to play when I was like 18 months. You earned it. Well, I can't say that. Actually, you learned it a lot earlier than I did, so it figures. Uh, yeah. So that's going to do it for this episode of Spot the Liberal. I have been Kevin Anderson. Providing my voice talents as only I can, spotting the liberals and bashing them to death with my godlike hammer at my side. Sword of truth, breastplate of righteousness, it is what it is. I'm the skull. This has been Spot the Liberal. I'll see you next time. Hi there, ladies and germs. Welcome to another episode of Spot the Liberal. I am Kevin the Skull Anderson. And my many voices will accompany me today. What voices? The voices in my head, silly. Man, you didn't have to mention that. That's a complete giveaway. Now people are gonna realize you're fake. Actually, I'm far from a fake. I'm as real as anyone can get, and you can believe that. Wait a second. You mean to tell me that you just exposed your voice talent skills to the world? What are you talking about, huh? No, no, seriously. What are you talking about? Actually, I exposed my voice talents a long time ago on YouTube. I believe in a series of three voice sample videos dated from about 2014, early 2014. It was a long time ago. Well, um, I don't see anything wrong with that, but I, I was going to be out there in a bayou there, hunting some alligators and stuff. Anyway, today I'm going to point out some pop culture stuff and expose pop culture for what it is. Starting with the obvious, which is, of course, everything. Man, I watch pop culture all the time, and it doesn't bother me a bit. I know it's fake, but, I mean, who cares? It doesn't matter if it's fake or not, because regardless, it's still scripted. Yeah, but you know what ain't scripted? Yeah, what's that? The fact that all these people are starving, ain't nobody got time to know the truth anymore, because they'd rather believe in someone like the Democrats or the Illuminati, like the things that they see on TV on a daily basis. Oh, well, now that I think about it, it is actually kind of sad. Just call it sad and be done with it. Yeah, that's what I say. Okay, anyway, let's get to the point. Pop culture can be summed up in quite a few things. Movies, music, art, literature, photography, pretty much anything. But not everything is important. In fact, hardly anything is important. Except so-called reality TV shows, the lottery, the government, Superstores, corporate internet giants, 
who established Agenda 21 like no one else's business and so on and so on and so on and so forth. And you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah, but can you explain to me what that's about? Seriously, because I think I already know this stuff. Don't think, Frida. No. Well, in that case, I already know this stuff then. There you go. Okay, so let's sum up pop culture in a nutshell. Bull crap. Hogwash. Lies. Illegitimate. Fake. No, really, it's fake. And as a whole, here's what I think of reality show competitions and any reality shows that are programmed on TV. Just, just listen. You don't even have to see it. Just listen. Do you get what I mean now? Seriously, do you get it? Dang, man, you, you didn't have to go all out with it. Well, I think it was necessary, if you ask me. Yeah, me too. Really? You think this is necessary? Because I didn't have to do this, but I did anyway to show you people that pop culture on TV in general, especially reality TV show programming, including competitions and talent shows, especially those two, are nothing more than your money being flushed down that toilet. I mean, that's literally it in a nutshell. Because what else do you need to know besides that? Hey, um, 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 Scully, can you tell me some more of those uh, tabloid talk shows and stuff? Because, I mean, I watch this stuff and I don't realize that it's, that it's, scripted that it's fake see that's the thing the media wants you to think that it's fake and scripted but in reality it's not because in fact the media exposes ordinary people involved in very very convoluted and unprecedentedly confusing situations that normal people in general just cannot explain so of course these people agree to air out these issues and confessions on live television in front of all the world to see so that they can ruin their own lives in the process and embarrass their family names. And all this for the sake of entertainment and ratings. Like Ian Bernardo, look, well, look what happened to him. Yeah, I, I don't think Ian Bernardo got a good rap from his appearances on him. Um, so you think you can dance and uh american idol you know he got a bad bad rep from that absolutely he did you know he did and you know about that first step always being a lulu guess what it could always wait it could also be your last bingo you nailed it on the head absolutely man but that ladies and gentlemen is just the mere tip of that old Titanic iceberg. Now, now, why are you gonna mention the Titanic? You realize people are gonna get triggered over that? I knew one of my ancestors as being a member of the Titanic when it sank, and I'm not even offended at all by it. Yeah, my, my own sister's ancestor was related, so yeah, I can relate. And I'm not even smart. I don't even have a talent bone in my body. I'm not gifted in any sense. I'm just as dumb as my dad. But you're just as smart as me too, aren't you? Yes, I am. And that's why I inherited your illness. Honestly, I don't think mental impairment is a bad thing. I think it's more of a blessing than a curse. I mean, George Orwell did say in his book, 1984, that ignorance was bliss, didn't he? Yeah, but he also said that freedom was slavery. Yeah, and he also said that Big Brother is watching you, didn't he? Big Brother is watching all of us, right? I mean, seriously, is he not watching us right now? Well, I would think so, but I'd care not to talk about it. And I'm just being honest. See, that's the thing. You already know. So why bring it up? Actually, you were the one that brought it up. Yeah, but what about Scully? He was the one that brought it up initially. Why don't you shoot him in the head and be done with it? 
Actually, no thanks. I'd rather shoot myself in the head. Not literally, of course, because that would just be immoral. That would just be taboo because people don't accept brutally honest facts like that anymore because they don't want to because they'd rather believe a politician than me. And that's about 99% of the world in a nutshell. And I'm talking about population here. Savage level omega no! Let's keep that hashtag trending all over social media. Man, you know, I really don't care for that type of stuff. You know, honestly, I couldn't care less about all this. Because it's just, it's, it's not important to me. It's not important at all to me. But at the same time, not nearly as important as you might think. Yeah, we know. You take everything seriously, Willis. I do too. Well, no. I guess that makes the two of us. Yes, it does. Oh, and what about the lottery? Oh, wait, that's right. It's the biggest waste of money and time you'll ever spend in your life. See, the money lottery makes off of you it's a deliberate insult to you, and to, you don't want to see it as that. But I do, because I know the truth, because I've seen it every single day. I know the truth because I've seen a thing or two, and seeing is believing. But seeing isn't always believing, because it's not just seeing that's believing. You've got to know that it's worth believing, then you've got to take what you believe as face value, and then you gotta make sure everyone else can relate to what you believe. And then you've got to accept that what you see should be believed. And then everyone else should be believed too. Or better yet, the thing that you see should be believed. But only if you follow all of these other steps accordingly and in that order. Well, not necessarily in that order, but whatever. Talk about ethnic cleansings! No, 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 Skull, don't, don't do that. Don't talk about ethnic cleansings. I'm not even gonna bring up the Holocaust, okay? Well, if you insist, and I'm talking to you, Herman. Now, come on! You expect me to believe that you're gonna bring up ethnic cleansings? So what? Everyone's gonna get triggered anyway. They're gonna get offended by it. Who cares? Freedom of decision, not freedom of speech freedom of decision and my decision is to tell people the truth that so many have tried to tell them before and yet anyone that listens to a truth or a series of truths like this probably won't find it believable but sooner or later they'll have to believe it because it's becoming more and more of a truth and a reality every single day as it is so anyway about ethnic cleansings oh come on here we go. I'm... Um, no, you... Oh, come on. It, this... This isn't even right! You know, ethnic cleansings have been quite a constant in human history, surprisingly. Ethnic cleansings have been carried out by many human beings who turned out to be extremely evil despite having done massively heroic things throughout their lives. Case in point, Adolf Hitler. He was a German, a part of the Nazi party, but he did some great things. But the few great things that he ever did are vastly overshadowed by his final solution, his Holocaust. And most people don't want to call it the former or the latter anymore because it's too politically incorrect, because it's too offensive to them. But anyway, this cleansing lasted throughout World War II because Adolf Hitler believed, as did his Nazi party, that the Jews were responsible for Germany's defeat in the First World War during the 1910s. So, of course, he created these concentration camps and he killed millions and millions of Jews. And the Jews that are still alive today and survivors of the Holocaust, they still suffer trauma and nightmares as a result of this, even 72 years later. Okay, you know what? Forget this. I'm, I'm just going to leave the room. Bye, everybody. I'll see you all in therapy. Hey, where, where are you going? You, you can't leave here. You gotta listen to this. Uh, Herman, she's already left. Maybe the truth was a little too hard for her to handle. Actually, no, it's not hard to handle for me because I already know it. I just didn't want it to be framed up! I never wanted it to be
to be growing up in the first place! Uh... Okay, I'm just gonna pretend she never said that. And then, of course, came Vlad the Impaler, who lived about several hundred years before Hitler did. Actually, that's an understatement. It's more like uh, 400 years than several hundred, because several hundred could automatically mean 200, since people are too specific nowadays. But anyway, Vlad the Impaler, or Dracula, as Bram Stoker refers to him as, impaled over 100,000 people, estimated, during his reign as ruler of Wallachia, supposedly a Russian colony at the time. But of course, justice came knocking on his door, and justice knocked down his door, and of course gave them the swift kick in the butt that he needed and thus the people convicted him of all these killings and they killed him but that was justice back then and that was the 1500s look at how rigged justice is now and not just on tv now yes i'd love to see i mean tell me about this this whole justice system that supposedly works for us but really doesn't uh all right so Throughout America's history, many people were tried and wrongfully convicted of crimes that they never committed in the first place, and some of these people, in some cases, were sentenced to death despite the fact that they were innocent this entire time, and it was only decades later that today's technology actually proved that they were legitimately innocent of the crimes that they were sentenced and executed for. And sadly enough, even in modern times, people still end up getting killed over crimes that they were accused of that they never did. And you know, it's funny because it isn't just happening in one country, it's happening all over the world. It's a ripple effect. It's an endless chain reaction of complete blasphemy and tyranny and Satanism plaguing our world. Christians are being persecuted just because of their devotion to God, and for no reason whatsoever, most of these Christians that are devoted to God, supposedly, are killed by so-called fellow human beings who are actually ISIS militants in disguise. And of course, these Christian persecutions and killings are, of course, orchestrated by you-know-who, I don't even have to say it, but the initials are B and I. Oh, um, you mean the Bav- Don't say it. Do not say it! Let's just call it what it is, okay? They're the Bavarian Illuminati. Because that's what they are, they're the Bavarian Illuminati. They think they're above God's law, but they're not. You know, it's, it's actually funny now that I think about it, because... In reality, it was always like this. It's always been like this since the fall of Eden. Since Adam and Eve were tempted by a serpent to disobey God. And, and funny thing is, God trusted Adam and Eve to do the right thing and trust God, who had made Adam and Eve from dust and air, and Adam and Eve chose to, soul, to sell their souls to a serpent on the ground that so happened to be Satan. So of course God had no other choice but to banish Adam and Eve from Eden's garden and curse all of the generations to come after Adam and Eve with a dependence on food and water, meaning most people these days can't survive without food or water for longer than about a guesstimation of about three days. And you just being lenient, right? You just being lenient? Yes, I'm being very lenient. Well, now, that figures, doesn't it? Yes, it figures. Well, it's a good thing I read the Bible, because it taught me a lot of things. And I, I'm, not even, I'm not even all that politically correct. I'm not even politically correct at all. You know, man? Seriously, I, I ain't even politically correct. I was born in Louisiana on the bayou. Yeah, and you and my sister and I grew up on the bayou, right? I mean, isn't that the story? Absolutely, it is. So in conclusion, Talent shows are scripted and rigged and staged and a work. The lottery is the worst investment you're ever going to make because even if you win 
only two or three percent of what you supposedly think you're going to win actually goes to you. Three, the justice system is so full of flaws in most places, even here. And four, it's always been full of chaos, meaning this world. This whole world has always been full of chaos. And that, ladies and gentlemen, sums everything that you've been trying to say in about 10 seconds, right? Actually, it's more like 20, but he gets what you're saying. Thank you, Kathy Lee. Thank you very much for clarifying that. No problem, Scully. No problem. Okay, is this over now? I've got to go to the studio with my husband, Willis, to record a new track. Absolutely, go to it. It's gonna do it for this episode of Sponsor Libre Road! Um, Crazy, let me do the outro, please. Can you do that for me? Uh, yeah, 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 let, I'll let you do that. Cause I'm a character that you created, so technically you own me. Well, you don't have to get all technical about it, I mean... You said you were gonna do the outro, didn't you? Yes. Then do it! This is Kevin the Skull Anderson reminding you to be on the lookout for liberals and Satanists and Antifa and ISIS and all the secret societies that secretly try and have been trying for centuries to ruin this planet so that the generations that come after us will not survive in it. I'm Kevin the Skull Anderson I will see you on the next video. And more importantly, I'll see you on social media. I'll see you on YouTube. I'll see you on Twitter. I'll see you on Facebook. I'll see you on Yahoo. Although I don't use my Yahoo anymore, except to check my mail because reasons. And I'll see you on DeviantArt. I'll see you on my AMA feed. I'll see you anywhere I have a social media account. That's that. And I'll see you on Tumblr. Bye-bye. Welcome to another episode of Spot the Liberal. I am a real skull. Yeah. Not that it matters, but who cares anyway? Anyway, I'm going to be commenting on this all throughout the video. As I explain to you, the atrocities that humankind has created in this world. Now keep in mind, these are abominations that we made. Not God, because God is in control of us. And we are merely a part of Him. CNN, the greatest lie ever told, said that James Comey has revealed his own secret, although it's not a secret anymore, Twitter account, and had a tweeted picture on that account from Iowa, writing in the post, Goodbye, Iowa, on the road home. Gotta get back to writing. We'll try to tweet in useful ways. Comey has a book out, do next spring. The book will focus on Comey's career and leadership. And says being fired in May by Donald Trump amid an investigation into the Trump campaign's ties to Russia, which are really at best mythical, because there was never proof of it. But who cares? Basically, he was ousted from his position as May because he was a Satanist. A corporate sellout to Satan. And you want to know what happens to people who sell out to Satan? They go straight to the pit of misery down below, 666 miles into the Earth's core. Anywho, enough about that. Let's get to our next story. Oh, and before we continue, this episode of Spot the Liberal has been brought to you by Dollar General, the same place 
or I win to pay three dollars to get a new head. And honestly, I can say that this was the best three dollars I've ever spent in my life. But if that doesn't say anything, then suck it. So let's talk about America's 50 best cities to live. Or as they call it on 24-7 Wall Street, the most liberal cities across the nation. Number 45, New Rochelle, New York. Population 80,000, home value 523,000, poverty rate 12.5. Number 49, Layton, Utah, population 75.6 thousand, home value 235,000, poverty rate 7.4 percent. Number 48, Appleton, Wisconsin, population 75.4 thousand, home value median 143,000, poverty rate 13.7 percent. Number 47, Orem, Utah, population 97.5 thousand. Home value, 238.7 thousand. Poverty rate, bottom 25%. With 11.9. Might as well say 12 at this point, but who cares? Number 46, South Jordan, same state. Population, 69,000. Home value median, 385.3 thousand. Poverty rate, 4.1. You gotta be joining me! Number 45, Springdale, Arkansas. Population, 81.8 thousand. Median home value, 160.3 thousand. Poverty rate, 15 and three-fifths percent. And here's a 10th most livable city right in my state, in Raleigh, the state capital. Population, 458.8 thousand. Median home value, nearly a quarter million. Poverty rate, 12 percent. I mean, not that it matters, but who cares? And now for the top five most livable cities according to 24-7 Wall Street News. But who cares? Number five, Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Population, 112,000. Median value of homes, 446,300. Poverty rate, 3.1%. Number four, Johns Creek, Georgia. Population, 83.8 thousand. Median home value, 372,000. Poverty rate, 4.9 percent. Number three, Arvada, Colorado. Population, 170,308. Or in this case, 117,308. But it could go either way, so it doesn't matter. Median home value, 341 or 42,700. Poverty rate, 5.4%. Also one of the safest cities in the world. Number two, Centennial, Colorado. Population, 110,000. Medium home value, 393,200. Poverty rate, 2.7%. And the number one most livable city, according to 27 or 24-7 Wall Street, is Carmel, Indiana. Population 90,500, median home value 315,200, poverty rate 3.9%. It's also a city that's relatively inexpensive and highly educated. And for whatever reason, it has a lot of crime. So, senators are calling for the immediate review of the barring of an anti-Putin activist named Bill Browder from the U.S. Of course, this is according to Business Insider for whatever reason. So Republican Senators John McCain, also known as the biggest sellout in American history, and Democratic Senator Ben Cardin released a joint statement on Monday calling on the Department of Homeland Security to expedite an immediate review of the decision to bar the banker-turned-human rights activist from the United States. They claim he is a strong advocate for anti-corruption efforts around the world, and that he and Ben Cardin, of course I'm talking about McCain here, relied on his expertise and support as they led the effort to pass the Magnitsky Act. 
referring to the legislation that was spearheaded by this supposed banker turned human rights activist as a direct result in 2012 that punished high-level Russian officials suspected of being involved in the death of his tax lawyer, Sergei Magnitsky, or Sergei, because technically that's how Magnitsky's first name is supposed to be pronounced. So Browder said on Sunday that his authorization to travel to America using his British passport via an Esta Vista was revoked on the same day that Russian prosecutors issued an Interpol warrant for his arrest on charges of tax evasion and murder. The Department of Homeland Security referred questions to the State Department, which were not immediately available for comment. Gee, I wonder why. Because they're liberals! And not that they want to be either, but because they choose to be, because they sold out to Satan when they were born. Didn't they? And this just in, ladies and gentlemen, there is a tornado warning somewhere in America right now, as there is every single day. And you wonder why everything's going to H-E double hockey sticks, or H-E double pick sports, or whatever. Either way, it's all self-explanatory. Not that it needs to be, but who cares? And let's take a look at this together so that we all can see the hell that has become of our world. You can see it right here. Right here in the blink of an eye. We caused this, folks. We are responsible. We killed countless of species over the last 40 years with nuclear power plants and pollution in the highest degree. Yee. Not that it matters, but apparently nobody cares. So it's not going to make a difference. You may also notice how my case managed to become a little bit loose on several different occasions, but nobody cares. Interpol did not immediately return a request for comment, but Browder said that Russian officials had used a loophole, known as a diffusion notice, to bypass scrutiny by Interpol headquarters. A diffusion notice is similar to, but less formal than, a red notice, which is the closest instrument to an international arrest warrant in use today according to the Justice Department. Later that day, when the warrant is issued, Browder said, he was notified that his ESTA had been revoked. He gave up his U.S. citizenship in 1998 and became a British citizen. And for whatever reason, the Senator's full statement can be found probably at the end of that article by Business Insider but nobody's going to care about it because they're too busy not giving a crap about anything and not that they want to, but because they choose not to care and that's worse than not wanting to care at all. And it figures. Also, just a brief pointer. That tornado warning that I showed you from earlier in this episode was courtesy of WFMY News 2 a CBS-ran news corporation locally, needless to say. Also, I must point out that something unprecedented has happened during the filming of this episode, something that's never happened in any Spot the Liberal or Talking to Myself news episode prior. My computer crashed! Are you kidding me? My computer? actually crashed because I had too many apps running at once. It kind of makes you think, doesn't it? It's also worth mentioning that this tornado warning will be in effect for the next 20 minutes, which is actually kind of strange because people don't realize how fast 20 minutes can go by. It's, it's, actually, it's actually like the twinkling of an eye. 20 seconds can go by quickly, 
20 minutes can go by even quicker. 20 hours, even quicker. Three weeks, even quicker. Three years, even quicker. It kind of figures, doesn't it? It really figures. Considering we live in a world where life is short and death is endless. Kind of a lot like bliss and ignorance. Choosing to live a life of blissful ignorance means that the blissfulness only lasts for a moment and the ignorance for a lifetime. Rhyme. But who cares? I must also point out that this world in which we live in is surely and quickly falling apart and that there is nothing we can do about it now. First the point of no return are we And now for a little bit of some old news The Department of the State has 40,000 plus pages of Clinton emails that it hasn't looked at yet Do you wonder why? Is it because she's a woman? Anyway, this bit of news regarding Clinton is courtesy of Law News. It's news with a Z. So far, the State Department has processed more than 32,000 pages of Hillary Clinton's emails as part of a Freedom for Information Act lawsuit from conservative watchdog group Judicial Watch. Secretary Tillerson should be asked why his State Department is still sitting on a mother load of Clinton emails. Judicial Watch President Tom Fitton said in a statement, It's disheartening that an administration elected to drain the swamp is stalling the release of documents to protect Hillary Clinton and the Obama administration. Can I just be serious with you for a second? Don't take this news seriously because it's hogwash. It's nothing more than a lie. It's the antithesis of truthful. At best, it's not factual, it's fictitious. It's an urban legend. It's a myth. It's nothing more than folklore. But not that it matters, but who cares? So get this, ladies and gentlemen. Mueller, according to NBC News, of course, I'm talking about the necrophilia bureaucracy of communism, is now investigating Democratic lobbyist Tony Podesta of course, we're talking about special counsel Robert Mueller. The probe of Podesta and his Democrat leading lobbying firm grew out of Mueller's inquiry into the finances of former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is according to the sources. As special counsel, Mueller has been tasked with investigating possible collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. Manafort had organized a public relations campaign for a nonprofit called the European Center for Modern Ukraine, or ECMU. Modesta's company was one of many firms that worked on the campaign, which promoted Ukraine's image in the West. Not that anybody cares, but nobody's going to want to listen because they listen to whatever they want to listen to, not to what they need to listen to. The Podesta Group filed a thorough registration for its work with ECMU only after the payments were reported by the media. Manafort's firm also filed a thorough registration after media reports in June disclosed and I say this lightly, disclosed its work in Ukraine from 2012 through 2014. The ECMU was reportedly backed by the Party of Regions, the pro-Russian and oligarch-founded Ukrainian political party for which Manafort worked as a consultant and which paid his firm millions. Viktor Yanukovych of the Party of Regions a Manafort fly, was president of Ukraine during the ECMU campaign, which ran from 2012 to 2014. He fled the country in 2014. And it figures, doesn't it? So in a statement, the spokesman for the Podesta group said the firm is cooperating fully with the special counsel's office and has taken every possible step to provide documentation that confirms timely compliance in all of the 
our clients engagements, the Podesta Group conducts due diligence and consults with appropriate legal experts to ensure compliance with disclosure regulations at all times. And we did so in this case. Well, who's gonna believe that? Anyone that's brainwashed by Lucifer. Meanwhile, a spokesperson for Mueller's office declined to comment for whatever reason. I don't know what that reason is, and I can care less. In late August, NBC News reported that Special Counsel Mueller's team sent subpoenas to six firms who were involved in public regulations, lobbying, or lobbying, might as well say lobbying, for ECMU. The subpoena saw testimony from public relations executives who worked on the campaign organized by Manafort. People directly familiar with the matters told NBC News. Mueller and his team are closely examining the lobbying campaign. Six firms participated in the effort, paid for by the Brussels-based ECMU. Wait a minute, ECMU is based in Brussels? In Belgium? Wow! The stated goal was to build support for Ukraine's entry into the European Union, the same source said. Three other firms in Europe, the executive said. And for whatever reason, I just put that in there because I'm random. Could not be identified or confirmed of their identities by NBC News or so NBC News claimed. But then again, NBC News is the necrophilia broadcasting company, or, well, that just ruined the joke right there, but who cares? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to do it for this evening. On behalf of yours truly, this is Spot the Liberal, a Skull Media Films production. Kevin the Skull Anderson, founder, chairman, and CEO. It's me, it's me, it's the S-K-U-double-L-Y. You got it. It is the skull. How are you? And let me direct you to some news today that's going on my TV. Apparently, a man who apparently had a beef with Christians went into a Texas church one morning a Sunday morning more specifically, and killed 26 people. What a shock, isn't it? That's an absolute shock. But let me tell you now, this is just the beginning. People, wake up! You don't understand what's going on? Do you not understand what's going on? Because I do. And the fact of the matter is, the Illuminati is going to destroy you all if you let them. But with the power of God, anything will and can be possible. For all things are possible through Him and Him alone. I should also point out that for whatever reason, the Texas gunman that was responsible for killing two baker's dozen people in a church Sunday morning was also wearing a bulletproof vest, a ballistic vest. And it's also been known that the in-laws were attending church at the time. And investigators, according to the Washington Post, according to USA Today, 
according to other sources that I will not explain, are hunting for the motive in a Texas church shooting as the grieving families continue to span the generations. And let me tell you straight up, this is no lie. This happens in every city, every state, every nation, every continent. It happens in every neighborhood, it happens in every valley, in every hill. Because people don't want to believe in God anymore. Well, let me tell you this, brother. We're all just as guilty as the elites are. Because we let them do this to us. Therefore, it is us that take the blame. And you know what happens when we deny God and turn to Satan? Guess what? You just made the list! And continuing our special Spot the Liberal News Bulletin today, a Texas official said, according to Fox News, that a dishonorable discharge would prohibit a gunman who supposedly killed 26 people from purchasing a firearm, which is exactly what he did. He purchased the firearm. And nobody knows why, but he did it because he thought he was God and he thought he could play God, but he ended up being Satan instead. And it figures greatly, doesn't it? Also, according to the Texas official, 10 victims are in critical condition for serious conditions. So those 14 people, a dozen and two other people, they're on the verge of death because of this madman. And, surprise, surprise, he was white. He was white. He wasn't a black man. He wasn't an African American. He wasn't a Mexican American. He wasn't an Asian American. He was white. So that man is a disgrace to all people who bear my ethnicity. And let me tell you straight up, there is going to be a special place in hell for that man. A special place in hell which no one can find. And you can believe that. Hey, um, Scotty, I, uh, I have a question here. Why in the world did that man have to purchase a firearm after a dishonorable discharge, knowing he wasn't allowed to buy a firearm no more, and go into that church in Texas and kill all those people? I mean, that's what I want to know from a personal standpoint. I honestly feel the same way as- Yeah, same here! Hey, doesn't anybody want to know why that is, though? I mean, think about it. It's crazy. People kill each other every day. It's insane. Buddy, you just nailed the head right there on the hammer. You nailed it right on the head. Got it right on the nose. You got it exactly right. Because that Texas madman that killed all these people in that church, he was criminally insane and seriously mentally ill and nobody can ignore mental illness because it is inside all of us outside all of us and surrounding all of us yeah and you wonder why this world is going from sugar to crap hey i think we should rub some sugar around the rim there what are you are you talking to me uh yes yes i am the answer is right there, and it can be best summed up in one word, you'll never- No, the answer is no, just- Lords of green, come down, down, remember. Hey, did you know that Christmas is right around the corner? Because if you didn't know that by now, you will know it once you hear Christmas songs on the radio because they started playing right after Halloween. Nobody cares, just leave it at that. Okay, so should we talk about American Idol premiering on ABC March 11th of this year? And I mean 2018, I don't mean 2017 because 2017 is almost over. And March the 11th is more than five months away, or four months away you should say. Or it could be five months away, nobody cares. Hey, I got a question. You're? 
Maybe we should just think about things and, you know, um, the Ryan of Kelly and Ryan will again host the former Fox singing competition. This time around, Luke Bryan, Katy Perry, and Lionel Richie will judge the contestants. I should also point out that this season of American Idol has been pre-recorded! Meaning we already know who's gonna I'm gonna give you a spoiler. American Idol on ABC is going to suck, it is going to blow, and it's going to bring television straight into the garbage can. It sucks. Do not watch it. All seasons of the show were pre-recorded, and you know it, and you've seen it, and you've seen it all play out before, so do not be fooled! American Idol is a fake! Well, I think you will find that the description of American Idol is as exactly as implied right here. As you can see, American Idol is a crap show. It did not deserve to be rebooted at all, much less as early as it did. It was supposed to come back in 2020, but ABC said, you know what, we're not going to do that. We're going to bring it back right now. So that's what they did. They brought it back. And you wonder why everything is going to heck in a handbasket? Well, you people buy into this crap! Because you love this crap! You like eating these crap sub sandwiches! And your pea puddings! And your sweat sliders and stuff! So who's really to blame here? The people who made the show? Or the people who are blindsided and brainwashed enough to watch it? I mean, you tell me. Is it really going to make a difference at this point? Because quite frankly, I don't think so. This show is the most embarrassing show on TV, and it doesn't deserve to be rebooted, and you know it. Wow. Wow. I, I can't say I blame you there, because I feel very strongly about it, too. Yeah, I think we all have a reason to feel strongly about that show sucking as a whole. And so it is time to get back to our topic of the evening. Namely, the Texas Church Massacre that happened Sunday morning. Now, there was an unlikely hero who described the gun battle and the 95 per hour, mile per hour speed chase with Texas shooting stunt spec. His name is Johnny Langendorf. He stumbled into the crossfire. And he was a lanky Texan with a fuzzy chin beard and the long horns of a bull skull tattoo across his neck. And he had breakfast. And he saw that something wasn't quite right. So he passed the church goers parked cars around the right wood front of the building. He saw that one vehicle's engine was running. It was a pearl covered SUV, a Ford Explorer, he said. The driver's door was open. A man clad in all black was walking towards the vehicle with a pistol. He was trading shots with another man holding a rifle. Let's look into this, shall we? Let's look into this. I mean, does it not make sense to you? Because it does to me. And let me tell you straight up. As the shooter took off. Stuff like this happens all the time, everywhere in the world. It never ends. We had to get him it never, and ever, ever ends. Traffic. And it never will until we all kill each other in a blaze of gory. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I know that this stuff happens all the time, so it's not really a secret. Yeah, we could care less about all that. What? What do you mean? What do you mean, though? Seriously. You know what I mean. Nobody cares. Let's just, let's just get over this already, you know? Let's, let's get over this. I mean, seriously, it's, it's, it's pointless. It's pointless. Yeah, I know what you mean. Let's just, let's move on to another story. 
The Texas shooting was so bad at that church that a racetrack would drop a tradition in the wake of a shooting. Texas Motor Speedway drops a pistol celebration in wake of mass shooting. And you wonder why everything's going to pieces. Well, guess what? You know why. And I think you want to know why, but you don't care to know why because you just don't want to care because you choose not to care. WAKE UP! Your reality is right there, staring at you in the face. It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more. These mass shootings have got to stop. If we're gonna make sure that mass shootings don't happen again, we're gonna have to do exactly what fellow YouTube star Tomi Sonomayor said and segregate. It's time to segregate. And I'm not saying this because I'm not the one that suggested it. Tommy Sotomayor did, and he suggested it in one of his videos. And you know what? He's absolutely right. He's absolutely, positively, undoubtedly right. And that's a fact, and you know it's a fact. And you know it's a fact. You know it to be a fact, and it's the truth, and that's the People, it is time to wake up. The dream you've been living for thousands of years is over. The reality is, we are in the sixth mass extinction that we know of. Granted that there were maybe four or five that came before it. And not before the five that preceded it. If you know what I mean. The fact of the matter is simple. The mass shootings have got to stop. We must all seize our weapons everywhere in the world. We must give up all arms and artillery. And this isn't coming from me, this is coming from Ashtar. Specifically Vrilon from the Ashtar Galactic Command. You remember that video in 1977 about this alien that hijacked the news broadcast in England? Well, guess what? That is absolute fact. It is proven to be a fact, and you know that it's a fact. Hey, look at that! They're doing coverage of the shooting again! Yay! Alright, that's fine. They're gonna do it for another 15 hours or 15 days or weeks anyway. It's not gonna mean anything. Nobody's gonna care about it. Because they've had this news shoved down their throats since Sunday morning. So figure. Now, I don't know about you, but as for me, I have a lot of work to do. And now, let's end this episode of Spot the Liberal with a new segment, which I'd like to call, The Liberal of the Day! Yay! 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 I mean, nobody cares. So, meet Leonardo DiCaprio. A man who shares the same first name as famed Renaissance painter Leonardo da Vinci. He urged the United Nations to leave fossil fuels in the ground where they belong. Yet, and this is the ironic twist, he owns a mega yacht that uses 100 times the fuel of an average man, woman, or child. And another candidate for our Liberal of the Day goes to all the players in the NFL who disrespect our American flag. For example, the Chicago Police Department just changed their sirens to the national anthem so the suspects, probably football players, could stop and take a knee. I'm assuming that would be Colin Kaepernick, but since he was the man who started it, nobody's gonna care. 
because he lives with a white family even though he's black. And here's the funny thing. Race doesn't even have anything to do with it. It never had anything to do with it to start with, now did it? Maybe you people want to know why that is, and maybe you don't care, but I care, and that's all that counts. Let me explain something to you. You people are being blinded. You are being brainwashed. You elected a Muslim born in Kenya to be president of the United States, and it was the best mistake you've ever made, but it was also the worst. And you know what? To be quite fair about it, you made the bed, so now you will lie in it. And on behalf of Skull Media Enterprises, Inc., I am Kevin the Skull Anderson, accompanied by the countless voices inside my mind, and I will see you on the next video. Good. Hey, I have a question for you all today. Who is Mark Mirzlinski, Chelsea Clinton's husband and Hillary's son-in-law? Well, do you want to know? Absolutely, sign me up. Yeah, there ain't no question about it. Absolutely. Join me up. Actually, I want to know too. Yeah, man. What about me? And me. And me. And me. And me. And what about me? It's unanimous. They all want to know 10 things about Mark Mirzvinsky, Chelsea Clinton's son-in-law. So, we gonna get right down to it. Yes, we are. Okay? No more! Ah, uh, man, I, I was just gonna get straight to it. So here are the 10 things you need to know about Chelsea's husband, who is also Hillary and Bill Clinton's son-in-law. And I'm gonna spell it out for you! Number one, he's a Democrat. Number two, he's a liberal. Number three, he's greedy as all heck. Number four, he's a part of the Bavarian Illuminati. Number five, he's in league with Satan. Ah, yeah, oh, man, buddy, I believe you're going too fast for me. I believe you're going way too fast for me, Dad. Let him speak. He's going to speak his mind anyway. No, he's right. Ah, screw it. You, you go ahead, man. I don't care. Yeah, man. Tell it like it is, homeboy. Freeze. How's the new land? Just freeze. All right now, daddy. Number six, he's selfish. Number seven, he's part of the problem and refuses to be a part of the solution. Number eight, he hates the idea of a constitutional republic and craps all over the concept of God's word and God himself. Number nine, he knows nothing about what it's like to be a truly privileged child and creation of God. And number ten, he doesn't care about any one of you or me. Not even himself. Why? Because he sold his soul to the devil. That's why. No! Oh! Catch me outside. How about that? Winning. Winning. Jesus! Jesus! Christ! Damn! Oh my God! Don't you believe it? Yeah, because you'd be in jail. And you can tell them to go. Well, he's my son-in-law, so he's entitled to be as much of a liberal as he wants. Let's say, if you sauté a scallop in a non-stick pan, they won't stick. That's why it's called... Facts of life. I mean, you do guys, you do know where this is going, right? Because I just summed up an entire top ten list about this guy in about three minutes. 
Or actually, no, more like two and a half minutes, given a minute long intro. But that's not all I got for you guys, because I got plenty more of that where that came from. Liv, one thing you'd be quite all right for telling us more. Oh, you'll be fine. He's factual. And he's been known to cause liberal cancer. I mean, do you get it now? Oh, hey guys, want to learn about Charles Manson? You know, he died recently. Yeah, I know that, but who wants to learn about him? I don't care about that. Wait, you do know that Charles Manson recently died on the day before Thanksgiving in 2017, don't you? Yeah, I choose to realize that, but I don't care. Can we just get to it already? Yeah. Yeah, let's just get to it, screw it. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to discuss the top 10 reasons why the media hated Charles Manson so much. And I'm going to spell it out for you. Number one, they thought of him as a liberal when in fact he was really just a conservative. Number two, they wouldn't speak the truth about him, but Charles Manson knew the truth all along. That's why people have constantly shut him out and crapped all over him. Number three, they failed Charles Manson like society has failed all of us because society, as you know, is controlled by a secret society of wealthy families such as the Gates, the Waltons, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and so on and so forth because they have all the money and we're just slaves to money because we barely make it to the next day and that's what happened to Charles Manson except he didn't have to go through that because he was in prison pretty much all his life because his mother failed him. Number four, is it five? I think it's four. Number four, the media constantly accuses him, even of death, of killing all these people when in fact he only ordered the killings. But apparently they think that for whatever strange reason, ordering a kill on someone is worse than the kill itself. Number five, his favorite song of all time was the Beatles' Helter Skelter, which was covered by Motley Crue during his tenure in prison. Most media sources claim that he cites the song as being the inspiration for what he called a race war. In reality, he was just trying to even the playing field between the rich and the poor, which is what any one of us would have done. Everything is good off of this, huh? So knock on wood! And everything is good to go! I mean, you do get the concert. Yeah! And on what we go with the countdown, and let's get right to it. Number six, Charles Manson was the original king of the shoe. Apparently most people think that it was Jim Cornette that was the king of the shoe, but it was actually Charles Manson. That was long before Jim Cornette even became a manager of anyone or anything. This was about 40 years ago, and he served about 50 years in prison for a bunch of murders that he never did, so I think it's a lot. A lot. A lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Number seven. Or is it eight? I think it's seven. I don't know, girl. Yeah, it's seven. It's seven? Yeah. Number seven. Charles Manson never kissed anyone's posterior because he knew in his heart that he was right. And he was. Number eight. Charles Manson was also an accomplished up-and-coming musician but his career was cut short because the elitists screwed him over and he had to take the law into his own hands, vigilante style. Because apparently vigilanteism is just illegal now because people don't want to enforce it because they think it's too politically incorrect. Ah! Oh my God! Hey, this stuff can't be happening, man. Number nine, and this is probably one of the most important ones. Number nine, Charles Manson was anti-society. He was antisocial. I like how I am, except he's a lot more brutally honest about it, right? And I guess we all are to a certain extent, right? And number 10, his claims about Richard Nixon opening up the country for foreign trade were absolutely 100% truthful. They were absolutely right. And he was right for saying that and concluding that, which kind of figures considering Charles Manson was born and died a conservative anyway, right? Good answer! Yeah! Good answer! Boy, I don't care what you say. That is the best answer I have ever heard. And once again, I say it's all good in this hood, so knock on wood. Knock on wood, knock on wood. Everything is good. Hey, kids. 
Did you know that Spot the Liberal and other such important web series on my YouTube channel is considered educational television? Educational television? Ah! Yep, that's right. Educational television. Because it's common sense for people who don't have common sense. Let's just get to the next segment already, shall we? Okay. All right now, Johnny. It's time to shoot from the hip. We're gonna talk about the ten reasons why YouTube is completely falling apart. And uh, we all gonna spell it out for you. That's right. Yeah, man. You know it, so do we. Let's get on with it already. Me too, I'm starving. Number one, too many people on YouTube who do stupid stuff just to get attention. Number two, too many people doing weird stuff just to get attention. Number three, too many people doing illegal stuff just to get attention and fame and money. Number four, too many people on YouTube in general trying to make YouTube their career and make money. I mean, we could all dream, can't we? SHUT UP! Jeez, man, okay, I'll shut up. By the way, man, what number are we on? I don't know, I think we're on number five, I don't know. Yeah, I think we on number five. Yeah, you can say that. Let's just get on with it already, shall we? Okay. Yeah, there's no question about it, keep going, man. By the way, can I call you Ken? No! Call me Scully! Alright, I'm not gonna argue with that. Number five, too many people on YouTube in general. I'm pretty sure that Facebook and Google have the same problem too, so... YouTube's not the only culprit in this now, is it? Because YouTube sees 400 hours of new content make it onto the site every single 60th of an hour or every minute. That would be about 2,400 hours. Actually, no, scratch that. 24,000 hours of new content uploaded to YouTube every hour? What? Damn! All right, that was just, this is just too much stuff, man. Way too much stuff for me. You can say that again. I mean, really, you can. Number six, too many people using YouTube and other social media website platforms as a means to cyberbully, spam, or troll others for doing absolutely nothing wrong. Hey, is it time to knock on porcelain yet? I thought we were supposed to knock on wood. Yeah, I think so. Number seven. Too many people on YouTube complaining about the sound of every new album that comes out that features the likeness or musicianship of their favorite bands or musicians or other such artists. I mean, look at what happened to Mythology. They released an album three years ago called Throne of Rain. Everybody crapped on the drummer. Dave Astor. Three years later, they released their ninth self-titled album. Everybody craps all over the vocalist because reasons. Because they can't really be satisfied with anything anymore. Because they're ungrateful and they don't give a crap. Yeah, man, that's right. I would think so. I mean, that's how people are. They're terrible species any dang way. Yeah, I agree with that. Number eight. Too many people on YouTube posting fake news. And I don't just say fake news just to say fake news. I say that there's too many people posting fake news on there just because it's true. And it's funny because it's true. Because of reasons. Well, that's not bad and I'm going to you good green. You could have said you winky, you ding a ling, any mad thing. It still wouldn't sound right. What the last What did I say wrong? Sir, we are the YouTube censorship police. We're gonna have to ask you to show your license and registration. License and registration? What for? Because you broke YouTube's ever-changing and ever more convoluted policy. No innuendos in a YouTube video. Oh, that figures. Well, here's my license and registration. What you gonna do with it? I'm just gonna write your citation. Okay, that's fine. 
So, uh, does that mean I get a strike on my channel? No. All right, what's going on here? I, I really want to know what's going on. Seriously, though, what is going on? Yeah, well, I want to know. Number nine. Too many people in the administration staff on YouTube turn a blind eye to every bad thing that's going on on YouTube, and they do absolutely nothing to do anything about it. Except for Elsa did. Why? What is that? They finally did something about that. Oh, they did? Yeah. Well, that figures. I wonder why that is. Because of reasons. Yeah, I think I know what those reasons are. I saw a video about it just the other day. You did? Yeah. Well, crap, my bed! One of them shoot me in the head and call me friend! I don't know what's going on, but I know it ain't gonna work here! We're gonna do the last one. Pull yourself together here. <laughs> Oh my god. And finally, number 10. Too many people on YouTube expressing their liberal allegiance in such a way that ticks everybody off to such a degree to where witch hunts start up against them. And when those witch hearts start, they stop right afterwards because nobody can find who was the food of evidence. Kind of like how the FBI let Hillary Clinton off the hook, not once, but twice, even though she had did something so totally illegal that anyone else that got caught and convicted of doing it would have gotten the death penalty. Because they're losers? Do you get it? No! Just, no, just no. And now it's time to knock on wood once again. And there we go. Surprisingly, I don't hear the dogs barking yet. That's because they know you're recording the video, man. Uh-huh. Let's just get on with it already. Oi! I want to know who wants to talk about Dan Schneider. Anybody want to talk about Dan Schneider? I don't know, man. You tell me. Did I tell you he has a foot fetish? He has a fetish for liking fate. Uh, not that it matters, but I didn't need to know that, TMI. Well, you would be happy to know that... Dan Schneider has an insatiable fetish for women doing stuff with their feet. He has a foot fetish. He's a fetishist. He's an extreme fetishist. And why hasn't anybody called him out for it? Because he's a multi-millionaire. That is why. And you wonder why Nickelodeon's going to pieces in a handbag, man. It's like Nickelodeon took their common sense, shot it 17 times, stuffed it in the back of a freezing truck, and left it to die in that trunk. I don't know, man. You tell me. Well, here's a word that's going around, and it may get a little dark in here, so you may want to listen carefully. See, Dan Schneider is responsible for Nickelodeon being the one place where foot fetishes are fantasized and realized in due time. And you wonder why? Because Dan Schneider... No! That's right! Dan Schneider has a fetish for women's feet. Particularly the feet of teenage girls and young... Children, women. In other words, he's a pedophile. Oh, I don't care about that. Just gonna leave it at there and just go from here. Nick gonna make a difference anyway. There's all cards about some stuff, stuff, but not like this before. Cause, uh, reasons beyond my controls. Maybe I should find stuff out for myself. Now, guys, you do realize that you're making fun of a famous guy who works at Nickelodeon, right? Yeah, I know that, but nobody cares. Uh, right. So the man who finally stepped up to the plate and brought these accusations against Dan Schneider, creator of many shows like The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, Victorious, iCarly, and so on, he actually decided to activate the conservative in him and he accused Dan Schneider by saying this and I quote 
He's a monster. The worst predator alive. And if you wonder why no one will confront or even charge him, well, he's in charge of many hit TV shows like iCarly, Victorious, and so on and so forth, which rake in oceans of money. Tens of millions of dollars. So Viacom and Nick basically warned him about it and suggested that he do something about it, then pay for his mad lawyers. Yeah, I'll just improvise in what Robert Downey Jr. said. You can say that again. Absolutely. Say, what's been going on here? I won't know what's been going on. You're talking about Ben Schneider, that's what. Ben Schneider? What you talking about? We talking about Dan Schneider, the man who's been responsible for exposing his foot fetish to tens of millions of people all over the world, the little boys and girls, so they can be like him and experience his foot fetish and whatnot. You know, stuff like that. Just, just fetishy stuff. Because nobody's going to confront or charge him for it. So we might as well. Hey, I'm in on it. I'm in on this whole thing. You got it. I'm in on it. I would think that his foot fetish spans many different Nickelodeon shows, including SpongeBob SquarePants and Bubble Guppies and, oh yeah, that's right, Dora the Explorer and the spin-off show inspired by it, Dora and Friends into the City. Yeah, also known as Nickelodeon trying to cover up Dan Schneider's darning fetish. Now I want to know why that is. Because you'd be in jail. Bye! You got that right. Yeah! I would consider half of all of Trump's supporters to be what I like to call a basket of deplorables. <clears throat> ah! That's what you get for calling us deplorable, you sucker fool. Hope there's a place down there in Dante's Inferno for you. Because I'll tell you what. You going straight there. I do not have sexual relations with that woman. <coughs> oh! Yeah, you going down there too, man. You going straight down there to Dante and the Gary's Inferno. Right there in the ninth circle. Where you gonna freeze and burn alive and freeze again. Wait, isn't that how it works? You don't know, think so. Ah, uh, forget it. Let's just move on and forget this whole thing that happened. Yeah, let's do that. Uh-huh. We're going to talk about something else, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely we're going to talk about something else. Hey, can I get on in this? No, it's all good. Don't, don't even worry about it. Hey, can I just say? No. Uh, now it's time for the helpful tip of the day. Not that anybody cares, but who cares? You know how they say putting toothpaste on your skin will solve the problem? Don't listen to them, they're full of crap. Use something like benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid to get rid of those bumps on your skin. What about when you get a freaking jellyfish thing on your skin? What do you do there, man? What do you do? Oh, it's easy. Just put some lime vinegar on it, and everything's gonna be fine. And don't scratch at it either. It's only gonna make the venom go deeper into your skin. It's only gonna make it worse! So vinegar on a jellyfish thing. God, and that is done your helpful tip for today. Hey there, all you happy saps. It's your Scully Boy here with some STL. Who's ready to hunt for some scummy lip ducks?
and you can take that to the bank and cash it outside. Cash me outside? How about that, huh? Nobody wants to cash you outside, girl. Nobody. Oh, and about that, let me just, let me point out. What happened as it pertains to this particular train accident that occurred just about a couple of days ago, maybe a week ago, maybe five days ago. I forget how long it's been because it's December 20th as of today of this recording. But I can say without any doubt in my mind that the train engineer was probably distracted in some form or fashion. And I know this because it's probably true. It's more than likely that it's true, wouldn't you think? Yeah, absolutely. No question about it. No question. <laughs> and it is kind of, it kind of figures, doesn't it? You know, it kind of really makes you think, you know? It really makes you think about things like that. Because it all makes you wonder. And it all turns around. And you know what? I don't even care. I don't even care. All right. Let's bring this discussion straight to the table. All right, you guys, go ahead and discuss this among yourselves. Okay, can somebody please explain to me what's going on here? And why do all these things happen at once every day? Democrats 
about that wooden uranium deal. In about two or three nutshells, if you count the in between. You guys exactly know where this is going, don't you? Yeah! Hey, that's not bad, and I'm glad. Let's start the show all right. Let's put a big, fat double bar on it. A big pause, if you will. Now, if you notice, Trump has done more in his first year in office than every single other Democratic president that ever came before him, from Andrew Jackson to Barack Hussein Obama II, put together. If that doesn't tell you how much a republic works, nothing will. Okay, back to the story. Airplane meals, strangely, contain inedibility 
cheese, such as partially cooked meat, which is freezed and cooked 10 hours prior to serving, rendering all of it flavorless, unnecessarily over-seasoned, malnutritious, poisonous, unsanitary, diseased, and distasteful. So next time you buy something delicious, buy it from a farm or a local source. And these, ladies and gentlemen, are the facts of life you need to know about food in order to not die from food poisoning. Hey, Sven, what's the way to life over there in Norway, damn man? Of reaching out to the unfamous. It involves one of my friends who I've known online through Skype and DeviantArt for quite a bit of time now. Um, his name is Oscar Chatterjee and he hails from India. I think he's from Mumbai or something, I'm not sure. But let's just say that he lives in a country that's run by abolition. And by that I mean illegal enemies. And when you're in a nation that's consisting of nearly one and a half billion people, you can only help but wonder how much you have to go through in life to be able to realize that maybe there's some hope for you somewhere else, just not here. I mean, I don't know. But this guy makes an incredible believing heart that would otherwise be considered pretty remarkable, and he has some pretty wise advice to share with us. He says that death is never the answer, that it's not good. He says that still, everyone will die, and that we have anyone who misses He quotes, that all meaning of happiness is in living a content and strong life. And to be strong, and to claim stronger, one has to fight and win the battle of dominance. Perhaps those strong people have nothing to be told. They anyway went through it all and are destined for that. Those who are destined to be weak suffer and their destiny is suffering. Which it's it's kind of it's kind of realistic. It's really realistic. And I can understand his reasoning behind that. I mean I really can. I can absolutely understand his reasoning behind that, you know? And then and then this this one of his latest submissions from like, I don't know, I think it was a year ago. He says that, and he's just speaking truth as far as I know. He says that India was and is a part of Eurasia, a part of the same com a part of the same continent when Europe and Russia are. The aboriginals rode up to there from South Oceanic invasions and are always growing north and gaining Caucasian females and advancing up and destroying lives with every advance that they gain. He says that it began on an invitation, not just 60 years ago, but centuries ago, when it infuriated a Caucasian woman with a madness word phrase, a little nonsense, and the Caucasian woman chased it to solve a riddle and showed it tit for tat, and it kept running up the riddle and nabbed her in a quarter and overpowered her and touched her defeated, and she was seduced to defeat. So basically, this guy lives in a country where it's legal to kill people, perfectly legal. And that country is, is far worse over there than in America or at least when it was back in the day. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking nonsense, and then again, maybe not, but I will say this. Bhaskar Chatterjee is indeed a very, very talented, very unique, open-minded, outspoken man. He has a great personality about him that shines through his art and his three-dimensional renders, and I encourage all of you to check his work out sometime. And with that, I conclude this episode of Spot the Liberal and this season of Spot the Liberal. Thank you all for watching, and good night.